Welcome back to our XOR Engineer training. This is part five, Incident Layouts. In this video, we'll be setting up the layout for our use case, displaying key information to analysts, and providing additional information to guide them in the response. And with that, let's get to it. We're back into our XOR instance. Now the instances that we fetched in are currently using the default layout. So let's take a look at one of them and see how this incident would currently present to an analyst working it. Pivot to open incidents. We'll just drill into this one for now. Now this is the default layout in XOR. Um, you can see from our previous videos that our configuration for indicator extraction on the incident type has been successful. We've got a URL, an email, even a domain from that URL have been extracted and enriched, so that worked out. However, as an analyst, this incident would be extremely hard to navigate and respond to, as the key information that we captured from the alert during our mapping phase, such as the source username, the suspicious URL, are not easily found anywhere on this screen. Now we could pivot over to the war room. If we look right up at the top, we can see all the information that was set during the mapping phase, but this is the stuff that we want an analyst to be able to see the moment they land on the incident. So let's take a look at creating a new layout talk about, and talk about some tips and tricks that we can implement along the way. Let's start by pivoting to our settings screen. We'll go to Object Setup, Incidents, and Layouts. And we can click New Layout to begin building our layout. Give this a name, call it XOR Engineer URL Alerts layout. Now the layout editor is pretty straightforward to use. It's basically a what you see is what you get type approach. On the left hand side, there's a number of pre-built sections that you can use and basically drag and drop, such as an empty section here that can be used to hold fields. We also have pre-built sections like malicious or suspicious indicators, ones for linked incidents, for files, for attachments that are available for you to use and customize the layout as you'd like. From the layout editor, we can pivot over to the fields and buttons, and we have available to us all the various fields. So things like our suspicious URL are here, and they can be dragged and dropped and added to the layout as required. Lastly, we have the tabs button here, clear the search, where we can actually copy tabs from other in incident layouts. So if you create a nice tab that we, you would like to use, from another layout, you can go and copy it in your new one as well. Next, the layout editor has four different layouts that we can modify. The one we're on now is the incident summary, it is what would be presented to an analyst when they're to navigate into this incident from something like the incident search screen. But we also have the option to edit the new edit form, which will be presented if the analyst clicks new or edit from within the UI. We can modify the closing form, we may perhaps adding different fields that we wish to capture upon incident close, or even the incident quick view, which is how the incident will be displayed when looking at it from things like the incident search screen. But for now, we're going to pivot back to incident summary, and let's start by customizing our layout to how we want to display information to the analysts. Let's start with our summary view. Uh, we'll move the investigation tab up. We're going to put some more important information here. Right now, this by default has the details field. We can click edit on this section. And you can see that the details field is rather large. It's because it's being displayed in this card format, which is a bit bigger. We're gonna change this to rows so that we can show uh, more fields within this section without having to make it any bigger. Click okay. And now let's go to the fields and buttons and let's add information from our uh, that we mapped as part of our mapping. We'll do things like suspicious URL, and it's basically drag and drop. If we don't want the details field, which we don't at this time, we can drag it across and remove it. But we can continue on adding information that we map from our alert. We'll do source IP. Do the event type, which should be URL allowed. And then let's add a couple extra fields that we're going to use and set as part of our playbook, such as detected internal IPs. Playbook is going to check the source IP to see if it's internal or external. We can set this field as part of it. And then we can even have detected external IPs and have our playbook process those out as well. 
Next, let's create a new section to hold our user information, both the information that we're getting from the alert and information that our playbook may be gathering about the user. So we'll take our new section here, drag it over next to our investigation data, give it a new name, call this user information. Okay. Pivot to fields and buttons, and we can start adding fields that we're going to use to hold our user information. For one, the source username, which we set during mapping. But we may want to gather information about the user, such as their manager name. So let's take a look at what fields we have available to us. Do manager name, manager email address. Uh, let's see if we have one to hold the display name of the user, if we ever need to call them. Uh, we might want the SAM account name in the event that this is different than their source username. And then maybe there are groups. So we can use the account groups field as well. You can always check these fields, make sure that they are associated with the incident types you want. I believe some of these are from our brute force and our access packs in the marketplace. But we can basically organize this around, give it a quick save. That looks, that looks pretty good. So we now have a section that'll hold the username and information that we're gonna get from Active Directory as part of our playbook. Next, let's add some quality of life improvements for our analysts through the use of incident action buttons. These buttons can run automation scripts or even integration commands. To start, let's do new section and we'll put this one below here. We'll give it a name, we'll call it quick actions. If we go to fields and buttons, right at the top here, we can add new button. Buttons allow us to run automation scripts or even integration commands on demand for the analyst. These are things that might happen external to the playbook but can provide some good quality of life. For example, click, click to configure. We have a button from our case management pack in the marketplace called the sign to me button. This button when clicked will assign the, the incident to the analyst who clicked it. We can give this a color and we'll call this assign to me. We can hit save. This means that when the analyst lands to assign it to themselves, they can quickly click the button. Isn't that awesome? Continue on, we can add another button. Just drag this over here. There's another great button from our case management pack that allows us to link or unlink incidents. We'll call this link incidents. We'll make this one orange. And then we can select the button script to use. In this case, from our case management pack, we have the link incidents button, which allows them to specify a number of incident IDs and whether they want to link or unlink them. Click save. Now we have that on the screen as well. Then lastly, we've been looking up user information or will look up user information as part of our playbook, but what if we want to give the analyst the ability to run that command on demand very easily? We can add one more button, we'll call this one lookup user in Active Directory. We'll make this one blue. Buttons can also run integration commands. So for instance, we'll be using the ad get user command within our playbook but we can have our button execute that command. This command takes a number of different arguments, but through the uh, layout wizard, we can actually prompt the user for which arguments they want to look up the user by. Most commonly, things like their username or SAM account name or their email address. So we can select ask user, and this means that when they click the button, they'll have the opportunity to provide either of those items in order to execute the command and look up the user information. Again, just another great quality of life improvement that our analysts can use. Give this a click, quick save. This layout's looking pretty good, but let's just clean it up a little bit more. Timeline information, we can edit this section, display it in rows to match our others. Any sections that we don't need, for example, we may not want the evidence section on here, we can simply remove it. We're not using child incidents for this, we can remove that as well. And we're going to add a tab for indicators. So let's remove this from that section as well. We can make these tabs for the work plan a little bit bigger, as well as the tab for notes. Again, making it give it a little bit more real estate for our analysts when they land on this page to review the incident. We now have the investigation data, the user information, some nice quick actions. We'll give this a save. And then we'll add a couple of tabs to again, further expand our layout and give our analysts even more information at their fingertips. 
Now, another nice feature of the layout editor is we have the ability to create tabs to hold different information or to give more real estate to existing information. For example, we remove the uh, indicator section from our primary screen here. So let's click new tab and create a tab just for our indicators. Call this indicators. Can drag it over so that it is next to our incident info. And then we can add sections from our pre-built sections over here in the library. For example, we can drag the malicious or suspicious indicators panel, give it a lot of room. And then we can edit this panel to show specific indicators for our use case. In this case, we're maybe concerned about the URL or domain indicators. So we can call this URL and domain indicators. And we can simply modify the query that this layout panel is using to return the indicators associated with this, indi this incident. For example, if we only want to show type URL or type domain, this, that's all that this will now show. Now, if we also want them to see all the other indicators, again, we could simply duplicate this section, put it right below it. We'll call it other indicators. And then we can say URL and domain, or not, we'll put the negative in front and not domain. There we go, which will then show all the other indicators associated with this incident. Now with tabs, we have a number of different options available to us, right? We can basically hide this tab if, want, if we want. We can also set viewing permissions on these tabs, for example, we only wanted our administrators to be able to see this tab or users within the administrator role, we can set this on the tab so that only they would be able to see it. If we only want tabs to be shown to read only users, same idea. Give this a save and we'll go on to add one more tab and give our analysts even more power at their fingertips. Let's click new tab one more time. Let's call this one analyst tools. Oop. Analyst tools. And yeah, we'll drag this one over, put it next to our indicators. Let's add two blank sections here. Now, what we want to do on this tab is give our analysts some helpful tools to help them investigate this or pivot on this particular incident type. So in the new first section, we're going to do edit section settings. We'll call this analyst tools. And what we want to call out here is that these section headings, these descriptions here, are actually markdown friendly. This means we can put a markdown table in this particular section, for example, that provides links to different resources the analyst may want to use as part of investigating this alert. For example, we could provide a link to our Palo Alto Networks URL filtering test site where they could put the URL in and get back the URL category from Palo Alto. Or if they're wanting to navigate Cortex XOR, provide them a link to the keyboard shortcuts on the uh, XOR admin guide, or better yet, you can provide links to your internal tooling, internal wikis and runbooks that it can be presented to the analyst as part of them navigating this incident, allowing them to pivot out as they're looking to investigate and remediate. Hit OK. And as you can see, we now have a nice markdown table with a link that they can click to pivot away from this incident to do further investigation. Next, we can provide the response process for this particular uh, incident type on the layout. This way, a new analyst may be able to review the analyst tools page and see their expectations for how they should investigate and remediate this inc incident. So we can call this response process. And the same idea, this is markdown friendly. So we'll put in some markdown that explains what the analyst needs to do if they are assigned this alert and need to investigate and remediate it. Can hit OK. You can make these a little bit bigger. And now the analyst can pivot to this tab and review the helpful tools we may present to them, as well as their expectations for how they respond to this event. Now, one other feature we want to call out about tabs is the ability to set a filter on them. So what I mean by this is we can go back to the analyst tools, click the cog, display filter, and we can show this tab based on conditions within the incident. For example, we can show this tab once the owner is not empty or an owner has been assigned. Hit OK. And this means that this tab will show up when an owner is assigned. Now, that's not part of our use case. We just wanted to call it out. 
but it is something that you can do both on tabs as well as on fields. For example, the display name, we can set a filter that will show this field only if certain conditions apply. Again, just another quality of life improvement that you can use within your layouts. Lastly, we can modify our new edit form to allow an analyst to manually create one of these instances if required. So we can pivot to new edit form. We can see the default form that would be presented to the analyst if they were to click new incident or edit incident with an XOR. And we can modify this as well. To start, get rid of this custom field section as it's not required for our use case. And we can add a new section to capture required information in order for an analyst to manually create this. Call this URL alerts, required information. And we can even give it some helpful uh, instructions to the analyst. Please complete all fields to remediate and respond to this alert. Done. And we can add in the core information or fields that our analyst would need to fill out, specifically the suspicious URL, perhaps if we want to block it, the source username, if we're going to be resetting their password, and then even the source IP from where they clicked from. Okay. Any fields that we don't require under basic information, we can simply remove. We don't need reminder. We may not need severity as we'll set that in the playbook. We don't need playbook. We don't need labels, phase, details, or attachments. With that, we can hit save. And we can go set this layout on our incident type. Double check that everything looks good in the way we want. You can see how easy it is to modify these layouts. If we didn't get it right, we can simply come back and quickly modify it. All right, we'll save our layout. We'll close out. Now the next thing we need to do is set this layout to be used for our incident type. So we can pivot to the incident type screen, search for our XOR engineer URL alerts type, edit it, and select our new layout. This will mean that that new layout is now the default for this incident type. We'll give this a save. And we can pivot back to our incidents and take a look at how it looks. Go into the one we looked at before. And you can see now that our layout has changed. Any fields that we don't see, one thing to be aware of, you can select show empty fields to display them. There's also a server configuration that can be set to make this the default. But you can see that our layout looks pretty good. Right, we can pivot over to the indicator screen. We now have our URL and domain and all the other ones. We have our analyst tools with our links. That looks pretty good. Lastly, we can double check to see how this would look for the new incident. We'll click new incident. We'll change the type to XOR engineer. And you can see now we have this new form that ensures they capture the required information we need for our playbook to run and respond to this incident. With that, Let's quickly review what we did in this video. Quick review to wrap this video up. Now remember when working with incident layouts, the layouts can be customized based on incident type and are often used to display important information to analysts to help them remediate and respond to that particular incident. Remember when you do create that layout, make sure you set that layout on the incident type settings so that it will take effect. The XOR Layout Editor offers easy what you see is what you get drag and drop functionality to modify both the summary as well as the new and edit and closing forms for the incident layout. Remember that our layout section headers are markdown friendly, to, so use that to your full advantage. Lastly, tabs can be restricted by analyst role or even filtered based on certain conditions, such as only showing a tab if the own, an owner is assigned to the incident. Lastly, a couple pro tips. We recommend that you create a template layout to use as the base layout for all future incident types. This means you can then simply duplicate the layout, modify it for your use case, and give a nice consistent look and feel to your analysts. Next, indicator and, in and threat intelligence report layouts can also be customized in the same way. Make sure to check those out from settings and object setup. And with that, Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.